In this lesson, I'll be animating the wheel you see here through a right and left turn. In order to animate the wheel, I'll be using keyframes to mark the position of the wheel at different points along the timeline. Visualize will then link these keyframes along the most direct path to create the animation. This process of adding keyframes to the timeline is the exact same process to follow for creating any animation of a part, model, appearance, or camera. In order to have better real-time interaction with the model, the first thing I'll do is switch to preview mode. I next need to bring up the timeline, so I'll go to the View dropdown and find Show Timeline. The blue text indicates that the hotkey for showing and hiding it is Control L, but this time I'll simply click here to show it. From the timeline, I can play animation, jump to the ends of the animation, adjust the playback speed for the animation, or toggle auto keyframing, auto fit to last keyframe, loop playback, and the timeline workspace. The drop down here sets the frames per second for all animations in the project but I'd recommend leaving it at 30 for most projects. To start this lesson, I'll toggle off auto keyframing and loop playback. To get the animation started, I first need to add a starting keyframe to capture the starting position of the wheel and add the animation track to the timeline. I'll make sure the purple group selection tool is active. Select the red caliper, right click, and select add keyframe. The hotkey for which is listed here as Shift Control K. When the first keyframe is added, an animation track is added to the timeline, and a gray keyframe is added along the track at the yellow current time flag. The animation track controls allow me to hide or lock the animation, hide the animation ribbon, change its name, and add or snap to keyframes. The flags here are actually two flags, and I can drag the red one to around the five second mark to define an initial range for the animation. The yellow flag marks both the current point of time the viewport is looking at and is where new keyframes will be added. Since I want the next keyframe to be added around the two second mark, I'll drag the yellow flag to that point in the timeline. I want the first motion to be the wheel turning to the right, so I'll enable the move tool and use the green arch to turn the wheel. Once it's in the position I want, I'll use the Track Options key button to add the keyframe. The two keyframes are connected in the timeline, and if I scrub through the animation with the yellow flag, I can see the wheel turning in the viewport. To finish the automation, I want to add one more keyframe, but this time I'll use Auto Keyframing to add the keyframe. I'll first place the yellow flag around the four second mark, then activate auto keyframing. Now when I turn the wheel back to the left, a keyframe is automatically added to the timeline. As long as the yellow flag is snapped to the keyframe, I can keep making adjustments and the final position will continuously overwrite the keyframe position. With auto keyframing enabled, if the yellow flag is not snapped to a keyframe, any adjustments would instead add a new keyframe. So being aware of the position of the yellow flag is double important when working with auto keyframing. The arrows next to the add keyframe button on the track options can be used to make sure the flag is snapped to the desired keyframe. I'll right click the extra keyframe and select delete selected keyframe. And the animation is finished. Before I kick off the render, however, I'll enable auto fit to last keyframe. This snaps the red end flag to the last keyframe and eliminates any dead frames from being rendered at the end of the animation. I'll view the animation once more from the beginning. And it looks good. Before I kick off the render, I'll double click on the animation track to bring up the animation properties. From here, I can change the name, loop type, and loop time as well as disable or lock the animation. Further down are the options to adjust the animation ribbon, which will be covered in another module. When I click on an individual keyframe, I have options to change the time point that it's at and the transitions in and out. I'll close the properties, and to kick off the animation render, I'll hover over the output tools in the main toolbar and select Animation. 
The animation output has two subtabs, the animation options and the render options. I'll start in the animation options subtab by checking the create movie box. Enabling this lets me choose a movie rather than an image format as the output file, the most common of which is MP4. Note that while this will output a single movie file, it will also output all the individually rendered images that make up the movie into a separate folder. The start and end frame and times are automatically set based on the timeline, as is the frames per second, so usually these will be untouched. If you only need to render a section of the animation, however, using these sliders will let you choose the selection. The render options are the same as for a regular render, and since the output file was already set in the animation options, I'll just double check the resolution and make sure the renderer selection is set to fast. I'll click Start Animation Render, and once the render is completed, it will add a movie file to the chosen location, as well as a folder of the still images used to make up the animation.